guys good morning uh, back to bromeliads so I just wanted to show you how to differentiate or find ripened bromeliad seed and to know when to pick them and how to pick them okay so I've got a Blanchettiana Acmea Blanchettiana and what I'm going to show you is to how to pick the seed okay in another episode, I'll show you how to process the seed and actually germinate that too. Okay, uh, I am in the process of actually doing those kinds of things right now at this time of the year. Actually, all year round, but yeah. So, let's get straight into it and go get some fresh Blanchettiana seed and see if we can actually find some other species which also have ripe seed that are not, which are not acmeas but are still berries. Um, and I'll show you the development of bromeliad seed in some other species as well. Okay, follow me. Okay, you can see blowing in this breeze very gently is a Blanchettiana uh, which has now flowered and has produced copious amounts of seed and how you know is you can see all the black ripened fruits so let's just pick one and show you what one looks like okay so let me try and find one that I can zoom in on for you which will give you a nice clear clear view okay so wait there is an unripe seed or not it's not unripe but it, it isn't officially it's got a slightly redder color it's ready to pick for sure but it isn't uh, fully ripe yet same thing with that one right there but on the other hand this one here is so black that is definitely ripe do you see that so literally how you know that they're ripe is if I just tug on them gently very gently they should come off it's like picking a blueberry and so that, my friends, is a ripe Blanchettiana seed. Okay, and let me show you what's inside. Oh, not, it's not the seed, it's the fruit, because uh, this is a berry. So literally, let's just show you, if I put this on, on, squeeze this out onto wood, what it looks like. Okay, so let's, let's go and do that. So here I've got a Cape Ash tree, which is called Ichabergia capensis. And I've got my little fruit. And right below it, there's another little Talantia growing right there. So I'm going to squeeze out this fruit right here. Do you see that? So the berries have got this gelatinous substance in them, which actually really just helps with, uh, because the plant is naturally epiphytic, it helps the, the the seeds to actually stick to the wood so I'm just gonna spread it all over and sorry for the shakiness that is pretty much acme a seed so in I ideal conditions this will now begin to germinate so I put it above there because as it rains it will wash and down and kind of stick all along this year and, and just get into the wood here get onto the surface of the wood here and remember they're not parasites they they have a mutual relationship with plants with trees so this will germinate so that gelatinous substance will dry out during dry periods but as soon as it rains it will rehydrate and it will create a film of water uh, which will feed the, the seed and the seed will be able to imbibe water which basically means absorb water to its capacity where it begins to wake up and then what happens is a good couple of years later you would actually have uh, a bromeliad germinating in this position here not all of them will su survive which is why uh, a lot of bromeliads use something called the R strategy in ecology which means they reproduce copious amounts of seed in the knowledge that not all of their offspring will make it to maturity that's just a, a strategy that both plants and animals use in nature okay so that is what the berries look like so now we're just gonna complete picking all the berries 
Okay, cool. I've just literally got this old dusty pot which I've just put and wedged in between the bromeliads leaves for ease while I'm filming and I'm literally just going to collect I'll collect a few and I'll just look for all the black ones and just now the thing also is remember bromeliads dude they produce so many so many plants so number one you, you don't really want to pick all of the seed because otherwise you'll just end up with like so many bromeliads it it, it 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 literally will be ridiculous if you have hybridized you should have tags uh where you've hybridized um just to differentiate the regularly pollinate the regular pollinated seed from from the special seed that you've now made hybrids from and um and then you sow them separately but in this case i haven't hybridized any of these this one I've just allowed to be itself and to come into full flower uh, and so now I'm just picking the berries uh, remember bromeliads uh, belong to the pineapple family so they are technically edible they don't always taste so good but um, they are edible so they're apparently filled with quite a bit of nutrients I've tasted these let me just oh this one's actually this one's actually quite sweet hmm it's kind of got a oh that's actually really nice that's actually really amazing guys blanchetti on a seed actually rocks that's actually I can't describe what that tastes like. Mm. Let's try and like watermelon. Is that a watermelon? Hmm. <gasps> watermelon and what is that? It's like a tropical, and the seeds are very. They taste like oats like dried oats it's like got a a nice powdery i don't know wow but the the gelatinous substance like the 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 fruity the liquid bit inside the berry is actually very good go blanchettiana my mom's name is blanche which is why blanchettiana is one of my favorite uh bromeliads mm. it's like watermelon and i don't know kiwi or something maybe anyways that's pretty good I've tasted some of the others they're not so good but this one hmm now I am beginning to wonder if I'm actually going to germinate these or just eat them all um, okay well now we know I look I have tried them before and I have I just haven't tried Blanchettiana I've tried some of the others and I was like eh I don't really like pineapple, so I assume the flavor would be very pineapple-esque, but it's not in this case. This one's actually really good when the when the fruits are black. There are literally so many seeds here. I am not going to pick all of this because, excuse me, I, there's just no way. Like, I'm not germinating all of this. I don't have the space for it, um, as lovely as they are. Uh, and this is just one plant. There, there are a few other Blanchettianas that are also in fruit right now. Um, so there is no way I'm going to do that. I'm just going to take some. And uh, yeah, just to show you uh, what they look like. So let's, let's find a place with better lighting so I can actually show you what all the seed looks like. So I've got this beautiful purple, black color burgundy or whatever that is okay some more ripe than others but they're pretty much all ripe and so now this entire inflorescence I'll let it finish because there are still hordes of seed that need to ripen uh, and once they're completely ripe I'll cut the flower spike off and you can already see that she's producing one two pups on that side 
and I'm expecting a few more on this side. She's taken quite a bit of a beating because she's sitting in direct sunlight and wind. Um, but hey, that's that's how I like my bromeliads to roll. It creates a stronger plant, perhaps not as good looking, uh, but in the courtyard, um, just behind that tree over there, we've got some other bromeliad, uh, Blanchettianas that are actually in way better condition. So yeah, that is how to pick bromeliad seed, and they also taste very good. So I will say, guys, as a disclaimer. I have read that they are edible, right? And studies have been done on the nutrient value and things, and apparently it's quite good. I will still say, just remember, some people are allergic to pineapple, and some people are allergic to the chemicals in pineapple, so my constitution is not your constitution. And so I would say, take it with a pinch of salt. And I don't mean that literally, don't add salt to the berry, I mean be careful when you when you are eating something that you haven't eaten before perhaps squeeze it on the inside squeeze some of the juice on the inside of your of your arm and you know wait for for some sort of reaction if you have no reaction then perhaps take a little taste and then see but i absolve myself if anything happens to you because i've eaten it i'm not dead i'm not sick so for me this is good for you Mm, maybe not so much. Right, so now I'm, uh, remember I said I'm going to show you some others too. So here's some other seeds, which are not ripe yet, and so I'm not going to pick them. Um, but I know in the hothouse there are, and outside there as well, there are some other species that have completely different notes. So bromeliads come in the form of berries, uh, capsules, and uh, so they, they produce wind-borne um, seeds, right, like the talansias, and then you have the berries, like the acmeas, and guys, help me out here, I'm forgetting the others. Uh, it's berries, it's capsules, and there's another one. I forget the other one. I'll put it up on screen though, but maybe we'll actually just find some now. So let's go have a look. Okay, cool. So this here is a uh, Talantia. I'm gonna try its name, Usturdariana. <laughs> um, but basically this one has been flowering for ages now and it's just kind of standing in the back end of, of the hothouse. Um, and you can see that its inflorescence is completely done, uh, but there, are the seeds so if I were to I'm just gonna break on off just for just to show you right uh, let's see which one's closest to being right that one that one there okay so this is the capsule with windborne seeds so how you're gonna pick these is if it comes free just like the Blanchettiana you're just gonna pop it out and then that's the seed so when it opens Let's just show you this. When it opens, it's got three sides to it. You see there's a line there, and then there's another line over there. Seam, and there's another seam there. So it will open three ways, like this. It will pop open, and then there'll be all these seeds with plumes on them. The plumes, and at the end of each plume, there'll be a seed. And this is basically uh, specifically epiphytic, right? Some of the others are epiphytic too, but this is generally your air plants and your talansias. This is what they look like. So, there are tons of them in here, but they're not ripe yet, so I'm gonna wait a little longer and uh, wait for them to come out. Let's see if we can find some others. Here's a Catopsis. Okay, Catopsis. And the Catopsis also has some ripe seed. Well, not ripe seed. It's also developing some seed. And they are not ripe yet. They are also windborne, so they will also have uh, plumes. So that is really not ready yet, but it will get there. Not all of them have been pollinated. This I did not pollinate myself. For the most part, I don't. 
the sugar birds tend to muck up my pollinations regularly so when I do pollinate I need to keep them away from the sugar birds uh, because they will decide no 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 I like this hybrid so they'll make their own hybrids for me um, so when I do make hybrids I usually keep the plant separate and away from the prying beaks of sugar birds so this is Catopsis uh, I believe it's Mariana let me just check the tag yeah Mariana okay so that's it so this one's uh, she's probably about to yeah she's about to pop there we go so let's see if we can find some more here's a bulbergia okay so the bulbergia this bulbergia is still in flower so obviously she's nowhere near fruit production yet but right next door is an acmea uh, Acmea or Lundiana um, and I don't think there are any seed yet or if there are they're not ripe yet but basically down in the bottom this these are very prickly ones to work with so you probably generally want to use some gloves when you work with these guys and also the Acmea fasciatas I'll show you a fasciata in a second let's just see if I can just maybe pull one out uh, no, it's really stuck in there. No, nope, I'm not going to damage that. But basically, that's where when they when they turn color, you'll see they'll turn color, and then they could just easily pop out. So there's a seed. Um, so they will swell, and that's how you know that they are going to that they've been pollinated, and 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 that you will get seed from them. So this is a Orlandiana. Let's take a look at a Fasciata. Acmea fasciata. So this is a vicious one to collect seed from. I've done this before. Um, and this is just, I'm not even going to try. But basically, let me just zoom in on that for you. Okay, very beautiful. Even after it's bloomed, this is long done blooming. But basically, the seed you would find, you see these, these three little sort of points right there so that is the old calyx of, of where the bloom was and below that very deep inside there is the um, the fruit so you would need a forceps and you just tug on them grab one of them and you tug on them if they come free then and they are plump and full then they've got seed in them and you can germinate that if they don't then they're dead and they were not successful at being pollinated so, yeah, that is pretty much most acmeas do that. A lot of them. Okay, let's see if we can find some others. This here is a Guzmania sanguine. Not the tricolor, this is just sanguine. Okay, so this uh, looks very chaotic because this is an upper papa and it's got an indigenous uh, tree growing out the side of the pot which obviously means this plant needs to be repotted quite desperately um, so how this one forms its seed is because the pups come out from the center of the plant which is complex <laughs> to separate on its own the seed basically forms right next door so in the center of where the old mother was which is in there right there are seeds down there so I'm going to see if I can show you the seed. And these are also capsulated seeds. So they've got plumes as well. So they're windborne. Um, which is a testament to the fact that this is an epiphytic species. So down in there. I'm not going to break them out. But yeah. Down in there you can't really see them. But you can feel the very sharp. They're extremely sharp points. You could prick yourself on them. Um, and the seeds are in there. So when they ripen. You've just got to check and check and recheck and make sure that uh, if you tug on them slightly and they come free, then they're ready. If you don't, if they don't, do not force. If you force the issue, you're going to get unripe seed, which is not going to be cool. And you won't be able to germinate that. So the Guzmanias, definitely also windborne seed, not berries for the most part. Okay. Right, who else is there? Yezatelancia stramanae. 
and this is the flower spike. Excuse me, so I have pollinated one, managed to successfully pollinate one of them. And then that there is the seed pod, which again is going to be one that contains plumes. And um, this is the seed. So when this is ready, I can just twist it, touch it and, and see if it's going to come free. And this is not ready yet, so I'm going to leave it until it is ready. Okay, let's uh, see if I can find some more. Here's another. This is an air plant, which is also obviously a bromeliad. Most people think they're not. Uh, and there you can see the seed are still, the seeds are still developing. So this has been pollinated, and there are fruits which are very unripe. So this is really, this is still a couple of months off from... Uh, from being ready to pick so um, let me just show you also what the babies look like so once <coughs> excuse me once these guys um, no I don't have COVID-19 I just smoke um, let me show you what they look like when uh, they germinate so this here on this log this little piece of log there you can see these are some uh, they are called uh, Talansia arianthos. Okay, so these are arianthos seeds. Let me just get a close up of that for you. And these are uh, quite a few years old. I think they're like maybe four, four years old or so. Uh, some of them not doing too hot, and others doing fantastic. And you can see how it actually attaches itself to the wood. This is literally like the size of my thumb, so that's very tiny. So it's, it's got a long way to go before uh, it it really gets go it gets growing. So, but from this point on, the plant is actually pretty good. So it's I think out of the danger zone if you were to if you were to call it that. Um, and so this one is going to easily be removed and replanted. These guys here, you can see how small they are. They're still a way off. Okay, now let's see if we can find some Neogelias. Okay, here's another Neo, right? This Neo is called... Mm, so many names, so many names. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Don't remember right now. I will put the name up on the screen for ya. But basically, I can definitely see that there are some ripe seed along that far end over there so let's just grab one of those i'm looking at one that's actually staring me in the face so i'm just gonna go ahead and grab it there we go and you can see different neos will have these beautiful colors to them so this one's got a nice pink color which tells you it is ripe and if i squeeze it oh look at that look at that guys now, these ones I won't necessarily just taste because they're sitting in gross water. But that's a lot of seed right there. And it is extremely viscous. Do you see that? Let me just show you this. Ooh, it's bad camera work, jeez. But basically, do you see that? Really sticky. Sticker, 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 sticker. So this will germinate. Okay. And that is uh, what the seed looked like. So they kind of all stick together. I'm just going to wipe this onto a tree somewhere and see what happens. Okay. Just to show you what the uh, windborne seed that I keep talking about looks like. Yeah, you can see there are two seeds, right? One and two. So if I can just grab something as a pointer, which is a bromeliad seed of the bromeliad in question, the seed type in question, you can see here is the plume. So let's do it like this. So here you've got the plume, and then this part here, the little brown thing, that there, is a bromeliad seed of a very large plant 
So that has got a long way to go if I were to germinate this. Same thing with that. I don't think these are too viable. Uh, they look a bit desiccated. So they've been sort of just hanging around on the plant. Uh, but generally they'd be slightly plumper than that. So let me just for size can I show you what they look like. I mean how small is that? Just kind of looks like a uh, dust really like hey like, hey, like pocket flint flint lint sometimes bromeliads will even grow on other bromeliads so here is another catopsis with some uh, some moss growing on the leaf itself right and you can see the moss are actually just producing their little Spore, uh, is it sporophytes? I forget now. Sporophytes, sporangia, sporophytes, hmm, long time ago. Anyways, um, there's a little bromeliad just growing on the edge inside this, uh, this catopsis, which is already flowered because I've cut the flower off and it didn't produce any seed, um, in this case. So there's a little bromeliad, we'll see what happens. I'll leave it right there. And just let it do what it does. Grow, my little precious, grow. Acme rubens. Also got some seed in them. Uh, not too many, but there's one. That's ripe. Looks very much like a Blanchettiana seed. So sometimes they look very good, which look very similar, which is why it's so important that when you're harvesting seed, you must put them into separate packets with labels on them so that you know what you're germinating. Because when bromeliads germinate they all look the same because they're in the poeles family like in the grass family so they're basically really really modified beautiful grasses um, and so you want to make sure that uh, you know what you're germinating i'll show you what they look like when bromeliads germinate on mass and you'll see what i'm talking about this is an Alcantaria, which is one of the larger genuses, like not larger genuses, but the larger bromeliads in the genus Alcantaria. This produces a very big inflorescence. This one's quite tiny, but the one back there, which is Imperialis, she is about to flower right now. And you can see down in the center there, you can see the, the, the rosette is actually starting to uh, come together so that means that the plant is soon all of these beautiful leaves are going to flatten and they're going to open up and that is a surefire sign that she is about to bloom so let me show you some alcantaria seed of one that is currently producing seed but they're not ripe yet excuse the mess i am redoing my courtyard uh, garden so this was an alcantaria that was growing in the courtyard and this is uh, the extent of the flower spike okay so it's quite uh, tall it's taller than I am and here is one really fat alcantaria seed and you can actually see the seam right about there you can see the seam running along there so these are going to these are going to be ripe and then you can pop them out uh, and or if you don't pop them out they'll just pop open in three directions like sort of like like that and they'll just blow away in the wind and and get caught on rocks and stones and trees and whatever else um, mostly this is a xerophytic uh, species so it means they grow on, on rocks um, and then there you can see there's another one um, and up here there are also quite a few so uh, when your bromeliads are actually uh, when, once the flower is done just because they look so ugly does not mean that they're not going to be useful guys okay um, so if you do want to try your hand at germinating this is you've got to have to you're gonna have to wait for this um, to actually uh, fully develop and if like I said if they pop out like berries and they're easy to pop out without any force then it means they are ripe okay so uh, let's take a look at some bromeliads 
that have germinated, both Talansias, which are the air plant division of bromeliads, and then also some of the others like Neurogelias and Bulbergias and Acmeas. Okay. So on this gr on this little grid, the, uh, I, I germinate uh, bromeliads in different ways for different species. Uh, but here you can actually see. Let me just see if I can uh, if I can just take this off. Okay, just give me a sec. So here you can see loads of little Talansias that are growing. So these are Talansia ionanthas, um, Mexican version, apparently, uh, which I received from uh, from uh, Mexico, funny enough. Um, and you can see these are, they were germinated on the 23rd of the 7th, 2018. It is now uh, somewhere around June 2020 so you can imagine why they're so expensive when you see them in shops because they take forever and if I turn this around let me just see if I can quickly do that you can see on the back side some of them have germinated on the back but I mainly put them on the other side but you can see all the little roots coming off there right you can see the roots right there those are all the little roots coming out, air roots, and then all the little bromeliads sitting on the other side. So these are the air plants. These are the ones with the plumes. So they don't like being germinated in soils and stuff like that. You can get away with it if it's free draining enough and it dries out in, be in between, but uh, yeah. People ask me, so how do you germinate them? Well, it's a complicated story because each genus or for the most part, a lot of genuses require different tactics for you to actually get them to germinate. So um, remember they come from m like all over the Americas and there are many different types of microclimates and each microclimate uh, presents a different challenge to the seed um, upon germination. So yeah, so let's look at some of the others. So these are young uh, neos and you can see they all look the same right and then here you can see that they're starting to get a little bit older now so they're getting a little bigger and they're starting to diversify and show their color which is very stunning and then back here if i just move that you can see some of the others just remain green um so sometimes it's light issues sometimes it's you know uh specific growing conditions so it really is a painstaking long process if you don't have patience just quit while you're ahead because patience is the name of the game with these guys okay um so these are some of the larger bromeliads and you'll see the trichomes for example on that one they're starting to develop trichomes right you can see that there and the little spines on that baby just beginning now let's look at some freesias now these freesias here are already probably about let's see what does this tag say freesia platinema fosteriana i spelled that okay i didn't actually spell that that was someone who works with me um, shame. Patatinamas. <laughs> uh, bless her heart. Uh, Frisia platinema. Eleventh uh, of the eighth month, twenty seventeen. Okay, let me just put the tag back. And these are basically those freesias. So they are nine, twelve centimeter pots, and they're all looking absolutely stunning. You can see that they're beginning to show their color right so you can see that beautiful foliage the markings very stunning and bromeliad the the their genetic very uh, variability is so incredible that all of these came from the same batch but look at the different colors isn't that insane i mean back there i see this one that's almost blood red i mean look at that Right? Look at that compared to any of the others. Right? Crazy. That's why I love them so much. 
This is why I love them so much. Right, okay. Cool, so that is pretty much bromeliad seed. Uh, harvesting the seed, uh, being able to identify the difference between the seed and looking at baby bromeliads um, before they become what we know and love when we pick them up in stores or go crazy about collecting different varieties. If you would like to know a little bit more, uh, hit us up in the comment section and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.